Hello friends, you are watching a brand new episode of the Green New Perspective podcast, your go-to place when you want to learn about innovations happening within clean tech, nature tech, biotech, and agri-tech space. In today's episode, we are focusing on the healthcare industry, precisely on the ways to generate it via. My guest today is Bo Mantrakudi. She is the CEO and co-founder of a New York-based climate tech company called Amarsui. Bo's personal journey from PhD scientist to sustainability advocate basically began after a chemical spill showed her how inadequate personal protection equipment or PPEs that we're using in the healthcare system today actually are. If you tune into this conversation, you're going to learn about this innovative medical supplies that Bo developed that are not only safer to use, but are also circular. So stay tuned and enjoy the conversation. Hi, Bo, and welcome to the Green New Perspective podcast. Here, yeah, nice to speak with you today. Can you introduce yourself to our audience and tell us what led you to work in the healthcare system? My name is Bo Wontakudi. I am a co-founder and CEO of a company called Armour Cities is me in South Lab in London, and we are New York-based climate tech companies focusing on offering circular solutions to enterprise around medical supply and PPE. So that include circular products, processing logistics, and then also data around environmental impact of it. I really discover the gap in sustainability in medical supply and PPE, really see how product in the space are not really delivering values to consumer. I was a PhD scientist by training. I was in a chemical spill accident where my own lab coat, my PPE did not protect me when the time comes. And that really opened my eyes of being unable to find a product for myself, how little a liability and access people have in terms of getting better quality products, sustainable products in medical supply and PPE, because most of the products are disposable, made to use one time, low quality products that been thrown away after the first time use. How do you think uh, important is innovation in, in medical apparel and what trends are you seeing that could shape the future of the industry? That is a good question, Sunya. I think right now, you know, medical supply market is $330 billion global industry and is driven by 99% disposable products, meaning, you know, all of these medical supply that people use, you kind of open the package, you use this once, it go in the trash cans. And you could imagine a lot of dollars are spending creating plastic, use them one time as though it away to become waste. And we just continue this cycle for 400 years of waste product to stack up in the landfill. Now there's really a shift toward public policy and then a global knowledge that plastic is really major pollution. And so there is global treaty on plastic. There is public policy and specifically in healthcare to really demand for the industry to reduce their carbon emissions from medical supply to half in six years and to net zero by 2050. And so I think there's really a shift in the industry calling for better products, better system, way to measure if someone actually reduced waste and reduced plastic. And so I'm really excited about it since we have been passionate about this sector for quite some time. How do you differentiate yourself in the market? Are there any other products out there that are similar to yours? 90% of the product in the market are disposable. Major manufacturer, major supplier really focus on disposable size of things. For us, we have always seen the gap in the space because by creating disposable product, you need to make it flimsy and low quality enough so it could be disposed at the end of life from a cost perspective for that to make sense. And so we see that the soft for better products and more sustainability is all, always something that are reusable. Just think about, you know, like plate, for example. You have ditches that you use at home. You know that buying a better quality dishes is better than to buy a disposable dish to use for your meal every time and throw away. Same idea about how we make our product and that's how we really design our product. We design product for quality. We design product for reusability. 
And then we design product for sustainability, meaning 100% of recyclable at the end of life. And there's not a lot of player in the space. I think us is one of the major player in the space. There's a other, but they're not completely circular. How do people react with when they have an item that can be uh, reused, washed, recycled? There are multiple concerns, right? Especially dealing with infection control, dealing with healthcare. There's an issues around, as I said, you know, infection control. Does washing and cleaning of our medical supply product and PPE actually clean enough to reuse again? That's typically one concern. Second concern is always about cost. Is shifting to reusable product actually save costs over disposable products? Third piece, this is around environmental impact. Some people would argue that washing uh, and drying and cleaning of those, of those products actually use more water and energy. We have done three case study with three health system and other enterprise and have shown that our product is actually four to 14 times more protective against disposable products. When cleaned properly with our uh, washing system, it doesn't allow for infection disease to spread. Um, in addition to that, we are saving 22% of costs immediately. And majority of those costs are from labor required to pick up all those wastes. The more waste you generate, you need to hire more people to pick up those, those wastes. And then also disposing it as a hazardous waste product at the end of life. And so we are saving costs that way. And thirdly, from the environmental impact perspective, we are actually saving 50% of carbon emissions and 20% of energy and water. And that is because we're not consistently generating new material. A majority of disposable products are using tremendous water and energy to extract it from petroleum into plastic to spun it into one-time use product. And so we are saving a lot of energy and water by not doing that. And do you have any user feedback? What of Amazing thing about the feedback from the user is like, I thought that it's almost like they don't believe that this is, this could actually be the product that they could get from our PPE. Yeah, um, I can see that. It looks great. We had a lot of good feedback around functionality and comfort of our product that really de designed for user to be able to move freely so they can do their job effectively, especially as healthcare professionals. So things like breathability, so many pockets for everything I need when I'm handling station. These products are actually fluid repellent, so I feel protected. And also when they have gender inclusive designs, a lot of PPE products specifically were designed for Caucasian male to start. And so there's not a lot of product for women when 80% of healthcare professionals are women. When you think about it, it's a little bit bonkers. If you go to work and you don't have uniform that fits you, you just swim in garbage bag or plastic bag. Just imagine yourself and make your job tougher. And having something that actually fit them, I think, is not only a sign that they are equipped to be safe at work, but then also recognize that they belong in the question. Well, it's great to hear. I didn't know the same for about 80% of employees in the healthcare system are women. Yeah, we go back to the challenges. I'm interested to know what were the challenges that you faced with when you were starting your company, especially as a woman in healthcare, and oh. how did you overcome them or are you overcoming them still? I, I think it's, and kudos for you guys for this podcast to focus on sustainability and climate tech, climate change, because it's an important subject. I feel like this concept, it's pretty new for everyone, for the industry. I, I was telling you before this podcast, I was in China for some of that. I was talking about issues surrounding global economy and what is the risk of global economy and human health. There's so many conversations around climate change and how humans are dealing about it. When I, this is my second time and last year, some conversations still about animals and polar bears and things like that. I think more and more people understand now that climate change is a human problem and not just polar bears problems. 
the beginning was difficult to pitch that sustainability and climate change should be the main focus for enterprise and business, especially healthcare. It makes sense because healthcare keep people healthy and a part yeah. of their commitment is to try to foster healthy community within the healthcare. They should not be disposing waste. They should not be creating toxin. They should not be creating more problems to the community. But now that has been brought and been educated throughout, it's made the conversation easier to relate because there's more investment done from enterprise system, but then also more advocating being done by individuals. From then to now is always to educate people, making them understand this new product, making understand the process, making understand as we discuss the, the differentiation of what we can offer than that typical regular routine daily basis. That's the common challenge within the clean tech. <laughs> My personal impression is when we talk about healthcare and waste, that there was a focus on that issue during the pandemic, let's say, and then it stopped after that. So I'm glad that we are talking about it today, bringing the, back the focus on that too. Particularly in my space, I could make mm -hmm. one important comment. During the pandemic, PPE, personal protective equipment, was the main focus for many healthcare systems globally. You talk China, US, Europe, everyone need PPE because it's just so people in the hospital and need to be cared for, and there was not enough to go around. It's fascinating and also really scary Listen. at the same time, because all of the hospital globally now that has been stockpiling PPE during the pandemic, especially disposable one, those PPE they buy during the pandemic now, now are expired. So there are just, I mean, tons, tons, you're talking about ton. These are like big amount. Like I think the UK just came out with a news that was like 13, 15 million euros or something that was spent in PPE that have not been touched. And it's basically go directly to the landfill and just going to sit there until they burn it or until they just slowly disintegrate it in, in the next 400 years. So I feel like something like that. It's a really good learning globally for us as a society and for the healthcare system that one disposable product is really hard to stockpile because there is a shelf life that is shorter than reusable product. Second, if you buy reusable product, you can continue to reuse those again. So you don't have to make or use as many. Third, if you could find something that are recyclable, at least those 15 million euros of product at the moment could be recycled instead of having to be burned or sit in a landfill. Tell me, are there any exciting projects or news for Amos? Yes, we get inspired by talking to our customer about how PPE product has been adapted in over 10 health systems in the U.S. now currently and growing. And so we've really been thinking about what is next for us. And we have an eye on the whole medical supply um, system overall to really move apart from PPE. Thinking about disposable test tube, thinking about biodegradable gloves, thinking about any surgical supply that are one time use that we could replace it with multi-use products. It's an expansion of product and then also a marketplace where hospital and healthcare system could go to. So they could select better product and they could get uh, really transparent data around those products that they buy. And what strategies are you using to, let's say, reach new business opportunities, new partnerships? Which partnerships were the most important for you? So we have been doing that in two ways, actually. One is to look at healthcare working groups that really now focus on sustainability and try to reduce their carbon emission. And those working groups be a collective of 20, 50 hospital system that are looking for pilot to adapt all at once. We are kicking off a pilot with a working group that have 20 hospital and they're looking to implement our standardized pilot all together at once. So that's really exciting. The second opportunity that we are looking to partnership with is with major brands and supplier and medical supply is to partner with major supplier who already have network of customers that we could plug in. They may have disposable products that they sell into, 
and then now looking to expand into other reusable product portfolio that we could perhaps partner as a private label or something just to be able to get our offering into the, the hands of the hospital faster. And ideally, where would you like to see your company and its growth in the next five years? Five years seems like a long time, but <laughs> not actually. I can tell you for sure in the next three years, we are building, again, the first net zero or the first sustainable medical supply that will be listed by biodegradable circular products that are available. We hope to onboard a hundred hospital in the next three years. So maybe by five years will be global. And from here, we're just looking to help the system cut down at least 30% of carbon emission. That sounds great. And one of my last questions for you is, what advice would you give to other CEOs or climate professionals who want to start their own business or newbies who want to enter the space? What advice would you give them as someone who started, you started your own business and it's thriving? One advice that I have is to always have an outlook globally and knowing the push and pull of the trends. I think it's really important, especially from a climate tech perspective, because there's evolving, changing public policy, there's evolving initiatives globally around um, climate initiative. And so for us to be able to have a tap on what's going on globally, we could position our business where it need be. Like for us, the past two years, things has been evolving a lot in healthcare. But before that, um, we were selling and mostly educating direct to consumer because it was the only way for us to sell the product directly to enterprise. But then now there's much more enterprise emphasis. We are shifting towards you know, offering more enterprise products. And then where can people reach out to you? Where they can find you? Do some additional research about your brand. Maybe become your partners. If someone wants to find us, they could find us on our website. is www.armorsui.com, A-M-O-R-S-U-I. And if you're looking forward to contacting us about our partnerships, we have an inbox is sales at armorsui.com, S-A-L-E-S at armorsui.com. I think we also have, you know, inquiry inbox on our website as well. So you can send us a message. I'm always on LinkedIn, so you can ping me if you have any questions or would like to talk more about what we're building. Just again, the important of educating one person at a time, really important to us. Tell someone else um, in healthcare that may be interested in hearing about us. And I would greatly appreciate it. So I thank you both for being our guest here on the Renew Perspective podcast. I hope you had fun as much as I did. And I hope our audience had the opportunity to learn about sustainability in the uh, healthcare space. And I really wish you all the best with your brand. I love it. I think it's great. And I really wish your plans to become reality because they sound really good. Thank you. Hey, hey, this is the end of yet another episode of the Green New Perspective podcast. This particular episode was on the waste generated by the healthcare industry and what can we do to make this situation better. As always, now is the perfect time to mention the sponsor of this podcast. It's New Perspective, Boston-based marketing agency working with clean tech clients only. So if you want to learn about how New Perspective is helping clean tech companies to grow, check out the info in the description of this episode. Since Green New Perspective is an initiative of New Perspective, if you want to support our podcast, please subscribe to our channel on your favorite streaming platform. We are everywhere from YouTube to Spotify, Zencaster, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Your support means a lot to us, so we really appreciate if, well, you join our cause on giving voices to clean tech companies. Thank you for tuning in, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.